I'm excited to share some highlights from our new Survey CTO 2.40 release. This release includes a few major platform improvements, as well as a series of smaller refinements, all in response to requests from our growing worldwide user base. So thank you to everybody for the wonderful feedback and ideas that have made this release possible. The biggest thing about 2.40 is the addition of a new review and correction workflow. For the past five years, we've gotten steadily better at helping you to quickly and effectively identify potential problems in your incoming data. In just the last year, for example, we introduced the Data Explorer, which helps you to review incoming data both at the aggregate and at the individual level, respond to warnings from automated quality checks, inspect photos and listen to audio audits, and more. But as easy as we've made it to review incoming data, we've never made it particularly easy to annotate or correct that data. But now we have. We've also expanded the range of options you have for collecting and mapping GPS data, made some key case management improvements, and refined several aspects of the Survey CTO Administration Console. In this release, we've also added literally dozens of other smaller improvements, from new math functions for informed calculations, to new preview options for enterprise administrators who are managing users and user roles. So now I'll quickly introduce you to a few of the new options we've added for GPS data collection. Here in the form designer, you've always been able to add geopoint fields to a survey form in order to collect a specific GPS location. Now we have a few new options available and they've been brought under this geo dot 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 field type. So there's actually three options in here now, a geo point field type, geo shape, and geo trace. And as with any of the other field types, there's help available. So if you click into the help, you can uh, find more details on each of the geo options that are available, including uh, information about uh, optimizing performance, uh, some new offline mapping options that are available, and uh, details about uh, how the data will look when you download it. So if we add a new geo field to a form now, we have this option to choose either a geo point, a geo shape, or a geo trace. Geo shape is essentially going to show the user a map and allow them to outline a boundary on that map. This might be a refugee camp, it might be an agricultural plot, it would depend on your context. But basically, it allows the user collecting the data to interact with the map and define some sort of boundary by dropping pins. And I'll show you how that looks in a second. GeoTrace is similar, but the idea is that you're actually tracing your current location over time and dropping pins as you go. So you might walk around an agricultural plot or a refugee camp, uh, or you might walk from one location to another meanwhile tracing the uh, path as you go along. I'll also uh, show you briefly uh, how that looks on the device side. Configuring it here in the form designer is as easy as configuring any other uh, type of field. So if I want a geo shape field, I can just go ahead and uh, give it a name and save it. Now, here on my device, I'm going to go ahead and click the Fill Blank Form button, and I'll select my GPS example form. Move forward, and the first field in this uh, example survey is a GeoShape field. So, I'll go ahead and click the Start GeoShape button. It asks me if I want to go ahead and zoom in the map into the current location. So, I'll say yes. And what I want to do is I'm going to pan over and I want to just uh, trace a certain boundary here of a particular area on this map. Uh, this is just meant as an example. I can go ahead and long press on the map in order to drop a pin. Then I can drop a second pin and it'll connect the points. I can drop a third pin and it'll actually go ahead and connect those points making a triangle. And I can continue to drop pins in order to define the uh, overall area. When I'm done, I can click the little floppy disk icon to save. We can see that a set of uh, GPS coordinates uh, have been saved. I'm going to move forward to an example geotrace field. Now, if I click here, 
it's going to uh, first give me that same option of whether I want to go to my current location. And then if I click to start uh, dropping pins, it's going to ask me if I want to be in manual mode or automatic mode. If I say automatic, well, let me select how often I want to drop pins as I'm moving along. And so by default, it says it's going to drop a pin every 20 seconds, uh, and that's fine for my purposes here. So I'm going to click Start. Now, in addition to the pins that will drop every 20 seconds as I move along, I can also click at the top of the screen this Record uh, GeoPoint button, and uh, that will go ahead and drop pins also. And when I'm done, I can click the floppy disk icon uh, to save. And for GeoTraces, I can save as either a closed polygon, in which case, uh, if I was tracing some sort of boundary, it would connect all of the points and enclose that boundary in a polygon. Otherwise, I can save as a polyline, which would be for tracing uh, just the, uh, the path from point A to point B without closing the lines in a polygon. So I'm going to go ahead and say, just save as a polyline. I didn't really uh, walk around while I was doing this, uh, but uh, that's the uh, basic idea. So I can go ahead and save this and exit, and then send this uh, to my server. So here in the Data Explorer, I can get a look at how this data looks as it's coming in and as I'm reviewing it. If I click to zoom in on my one submission here that I just collected on my device, I can see that the raw GPS data is here. I can also click a View button to expand that. I could switch into satellite mode, I could switch into a full screen view if I wanted to explore it more, but you can see that that boundary, that uh, data that I collected, is uh, right here on this map, and I can view it in broader context if I zoom in and out, and that kind of thing. For the GeoTrace field, I can go ahead and click and view that as well. Uh, it wasn't much, I just collected uh, a few positions, uh, as I was uh, sitting here recording the video, uh, and so this data isn't uh, very impressive, but you can imagine if I had uh, walked around the uh, building or I'd walked around a, a camp or uh, a village boundary, uh, then I'd be able to also uh, see that uh, traced um, data here in the map view. So those are the main highlights for the new GPS data collection options although there are a range of options also available on the device for preloading offline map tiles. So if your users aren't going to have an uh, internet connection in the field, but you still want them to be able to interact with uh, maps and draw boundaries and that kind of thing, uh, then there are options available now for uh, loading onto the devices the map tiles that are necessary for them to be able to operate and collect this kind of rich GPS data uh, fully offline. For more about the other improvements in this release, please check out our other videos in this series. And, of course, if you haven't already, you can always update for free. Just go to our website, log in to manage your subscription, and click the green button to update now. And thank you for using SurveyCTO.